Praise God, hallelujah. I welcome you all back to an Cosmic Bible podcast. And today I'm going to be doing a teaching on tithing. I'm going to be doing a teaching on tithing. Today, tithing is a controversial subject in the Christian circle, and it is about time this topic is properly addressed. Should tithing be a controversial topic among new covenant believers? No, because the Bible is very clear on the subject. So today I'm going to show you some Bible passages that answers the question, is tithing under the new covenant? And to get started with, I would like us to read from Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 12. This is one of the Bible passages that preachers of today use a lot to collect tithes from the people of God. And I read, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Now the question becomes, who is this particular passage referring to? Who are the ones that are refusing to bring in all the tithes to the storehouse of God? Is this Bible passage referring to Jews or is this Bible passage referring to Gentiles? Before I answer that question, Let's read something from the book of Numbers, chapter 18, verse 21 to 24. Numbers, chapter 18, verse 21 to 24. And if you have a Bible, I would like you to read along with me. I wouldn't like you to take my word for it. And I read, And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for their services which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generation that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance, but the tithes of the children of Israel which they offer as an heave offering unto the Lord I have given to Levites to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, Among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. Amen. So in in so in ancient Israel, Levites have no part in the share of the land of Israel. So God gave Israel a commandment under the law to give a tenth of Israel to Levites as their inheritance for the services they provide in the tabernacle. It's, it's very clear if you read Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 to 12 that God is not speaking to Gentiles. God is speaking to Jewish people who have refused to pay their tithes to the Levites. It may interest you to know that today the Jewish people do not pay tithe. The Jewish people do not pay tithe today for two main reasons. One is that there is no working Levitical priesthood currently in service. The second reason why the Jewish people don't pay tithes today is because there is no standing temple in Israel where the tithe can be brought properly. And if you study Jewish history, you know that the first temple and second temple were both destroyed. The first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BCE. BCE simply means before common era. And according to some 
Jewish historians, they believe that the temple was destroyed in 425 BCE. The second temple before it was destroyed was known as Herod's Temple. It was destroyed by the Romans in 70 CE. CE simply means common era during the siege of Jerusalem. So the question is, if the Jewish people of today don't pay tithe, why are Christians paying tithe? If people who have been given the law to tithe to the Levites are not paying tithe because one, there is no working Levitical priesthood currently in service today and two, there is no standing temple in Israel where the tithes can be brought properly, then why are Christians paying tithe? Don't take my word for it. Go to YouTube and type in why Jews do not pay tithe and you would see rabbis that explain to you why Jews of today do not pay tithe. So now the question becomes, if Jews don't pay tithes, how do they fund their synagogues? So in Jewish synagogues, there is a box in the back of the synagogue called the Zidaka box, or in other words, charity box, and it is left to the individual when and how much they give. Nobody keeps records of who is giving and who hasn't been given. Fundraising and membership dues are also other ways by which the Jewish synagogue fund their operations. So now, when it comes to the New Covenant Church, there is nowhere in the Bible, in the New Testament, where it says that Christians or Gentiles should pay tithes. Some pastors argue that Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek before the law. And because Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek before the law, that is why Christians are entitled to pay tithes. But let's look at what the Bible says in the book of Hebrew chapter 7. And then I'll go back to the book of Genesis to show you in context what the scripture in Hebrews chapter 7 is referring to. So I read from Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 to 2. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. So a lot of New Testament preachers also uh, borrow this scripture here from Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 to 2 to say that Abraham tied before the law. And because Abraham tied before the law, that is why Gentiles who are Christians today also have to tithe. If Abraham tied before the law, it suggests to me that the tithe that Abraham gave to Melchizedek was a free will offering because he wasn't compelled to pay tithe to Melchizedek. Now, if Abraham paid tithe before the law, it means that what we read in Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 12 is not referring to Gentiles who do not pay their tithes because there are no consequences for giving to God voluntarily. So if I decide to pay 50% of my income to the church and I do that for three weeks and I don't do it anymore, there is no consequences that come with it because it's a free will offering. So if Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek and that happened before the law, that means that Abraham wasn't compelled to do it. And in essence, it doesn't mean that Gentiles are to tithe. But for the sake of argument, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 14 verse 19 to 24 to see what actually happened. But before we look at that, I would like us to know that when God gave Abraham victory over the king of Elam, on his way home, he met Melchizedek. And Melchizedek blessed him and Abraham in turn gave him a tithe of all the spoil he had taken from the opposing armies. Much of it was the property of the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. And that can be seen in Genesis chapter 14 verse 19 to 24. The tithe that the book of Hebrew is talking about that Abraham paid to Melchizedek wasn't out of his income. It was part of the goods that he, he recovered from the opposing armies that he defeated. He took a tenth of that and gave to Melchizedek. So it wasn't out of his income. However, let's read 
Genesis chapter 14 verse 19 to 24 and see what this uh, passage really means in context. So I read from Genesis 14 verse 19 to 24. Melchizedek blessed Abraham with this blessing. Blessed be Abraham by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has defeated your enemies for you. Then Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the goods he had recovered. The king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give back my people who were captured, but you may keep for yourself all the goods you have recovered. Abraham replied to the king of Sodom, I solemnly swear to the Lord God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take so much as a single thread or sandal tongue from what belongs to you. Otherwise, you might say I am the one who made Abraham rich. I will accept only what my young warriors have already eaten, and I request that you give a fair share of the goods to my allies, Anner, Eshkol, and Mamre. So here, it is very clear what happened when Abraham defeated uh, the armies of Sodom and Gomorrah. We can see here that the tithe that Abraham gave to Melchizedek was part of the goods that he recovered from the armies of Sodom and Gomorrah. And after giving the tenth part to Melchizedek, whatever is left, he gave back to the king of Sodom. And you can see that in the verse 23 when he said that I will not take so much as a single thread or sandal tongue from what belongs to you. Otherwise, you might say, I am the one who made Abraham rich. So we see very here that Abraham did not even take the rest of the goods that he recovered from the kings. Uh, he gave everything back to them after he gave a tenth of the spoil to Melchizedek. So this does not suggest in any way that Gentiles today should pay tithe. So it is very clear that the tithe that Abraham gave did not come from his own income. It was also a one-time incident recorded in the Hebrew scriptures, which is the Old Testament. This does not suggest in any way that New Covenant Christians should pay tithe. Now, if you look at the New Testament, there is nowhere in the New Testament that talks about Gentiles or Christians are to pay tithe. Paul used to be a Pharisee of Pharisees. But Paul, when he became a Christian, he never taught the New Covenant Church to pay tithes. What Paul wrote to Corinthians about giving can be seen in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And I read, Every man, according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So here it's very clear that even Paul understands that God wants us to give cheerfully. God doesn't want us to give grudgingly or of necessity. We don't give to God because we have to give to God. We give to God willingly out of our heart because we want to, not because we have to. And as Christians today, we have to understand that our relationship with God is not based on the law. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us. And today under the new covenant, God is not looking for you to give him anything for him to bless you. And this is evident in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 32 and I read, He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If you don't catch that, I'm going to read it again. Romans 8 verse 32 says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So here it's very clear in the book of Romans that if God gave us heaven's best, how shall he not freely give us all things? So it doesn't matter what you want in Christ, whether it's healing, whether it's financial blessing, whether it's peace of mind, everything is available for free. God is not asking you to bring money before he blesses you. Whatever we've been hearing in, in, our, in our church is that you have to bring money for God to bless you. It's not according to the, the word of God. It's not according to the word of God. And we must not allow church doctrine 
to overrule the truth of the Word of God. Today we have so many brothers and sisters in churches today that are feeling guilty and condemned because sometimes they don't have the money to pay tithe. There are people who don't even save 10% of their income but they are being compelled to pay tithe. And these are the very people that Christ died for. The question I want to ask all believers today is, what are we doing with the salvation that Christ has given us? Have we received this salvation to put ourselves back into bondage? My brothers and sisters, we have to study the Bible. I keep saying this in almost all my podcasts. We have to study the Bible for ourselves. Because without studying the Bible, anybody can take anything and bring to you and you will believe it. Tithing is not for the new covenant church. Even the Jews of today do not tithe. Why? Because there is no Levitical priesthood currently in service. And the second reason, the second main reason why they do not tithe is because there is no standing temple in Israel where the tithe can be brought properly. So what are we doing as believers? I am not against giving, I'm all for giving. When Jesus Christ came, he gave us his all. Jesus Christ did not come to give us his 10%. Jesus Christ came and he gave us his 100%. And in the same way as believers, if you know what Christ has done for you, you will give freely and not grudgingly and willingly. You will do so willingly and cheerfully. It doesn't matter whether you are giving 5%. It doesn't matter whether you are giving 1%. It doesn't matter whether you are, you are giving 100%. Once you are doing so cheerfully and willingly, God is pleased with you. And I want you to understand that the reason why Christ came to save you is because he wanted to give you eternal life. And that is the most important thing about the new covenant gospel. And that is the good news. So in conclusion, I want you to know that tithing is not for the New Testament church. I want to encourage you to continue to study the word of God give willingly from your heart and God will continue to bless you not because of how much you gave but because of how much he gave on our behalf I want you to know today that right perception about God leads to right behavior towards God and until next time continue to believe God bless